Welcome to the first school board meeting of the new school year, or of the new year, <laughs> the Monday, January 13th school board meeting. Would you please rise for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We apologize for starting late. We had an executive session that went right up to 6 o'clock, and then we had to um, get the technical uh, television working. <laughs> so... Um, at this point, do we have any changes, amendments, additions, or deletions to the agenda? I have one. I placed in front of you an amendment of the intergovernmental agreement for the use of the government-owned facility. This is an agreement with the city of Tavares, and I'm placing that under discussion for this evening as an emergency item due to the fact that it um, is time-sensitive so that our students will be ready for... Um, um, tryouts. There's a word. Tryouts in two weeks. So that, that's they need to get the work done prior to that. So we'll discuss that under discussion. So that is an added item that we just received from the city this afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Looks like full 808. 808. Just for comment. All right. Anything else? Anyone? No. Okay. And. Approval of the minute of the minutes, Superintendent. Recommend approval of the minutes from the school board workshop December second, twenty nineteen, the regular school board meeting December ninth, twenty nineteen, the special school board meeting December sixteenth, twenty nineteen, and the executive session for litigation on December sixteenth, twenty nineteen. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motions unanimous. Um, moving on to public input at this point, um, I have Kim Cronin. Good evening, Superintendent and Board Members. Happy New Year. Um, I know I sent you all an article over the holidays about the backbone of the school board and being the support staff. Um, you also tonight have an have a um, pay scale on here for the SEIU bargaining unit. And I want you to know that this pay scale has been updated twice in the last two years because minimum wage went up. So we had to raise our lowest paid on this payroll scale. This payroll scale hasn't actually been updated since 2014, which is sad. And this is something that needs to be a priority that we need to do if we want to get workers to come to work for this district. You know, we, we went through a, um, a series here where we had employees, we had people applying all the time. Administrators would tell me that, you know, I've got 40, 50 applications to look at. That's not true today. Today we're lucky if we're getting two or three applications. When you're trying to compete with people that are doing minimum wage is 13 to $15 an hour. We're not hiring them for nine. Also on, your, on the agenda tonight is a calendar for the 186-day employees. Um, I do have an issue with that. We have a meeting tomorrow, and it's nothing to add a day or anything. It's the food service um, professional development day. So uh, we'll be talking about that tomorrow, Mr. Farnsworth and I in food service. Um, you know, today we know that there's a big rally in Tallahassee with teachers and support staff. Um, unfortunately, we all can't attend some of these rallies like that. So I think in the very near future, I think Lake County needs to have a rally right here before a school board meeting, and I would like to see all of you joining out there with us. Thank you. I love that idea, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Moving on to reports. Um, the Educational Foundation Report with Ms. Carmen Columbat. Chairwoman, Board, and Superintendent. Uh, Apple Mart has um, 
543 teachers that have been through the store, which is a 29% increase over the same time period last year. And we've distributed $40,725 worth of supplies. Accompanied by a bright red Hyundai Elantra, about 20 uh, administrators, foundation board, press, and the crew from Jenkins Auto Group tapped the three finalists for Teacher of the Year last week, Dorlene Eller from Groveland, Sarah Foster from Pine Ridge, and Christine Palmer from Triangle earned the honor. All 48 nominees from the district will be honored at the celebration on Thursday, January the 30th at the new Venetian Center in Leesburg. Duke Energy is the presenting sponsor. Ernie Morris Enterprises and Han again are donating over $10,000 worth of chairs uh, to each of our nominees. Um, that puts that company at over $120,000 um, in the past few years. And then, of course, our winner will drive off in that bright red Hyundai Elantra, uh, which is donated by Jenkins uh, Auto Group. Universal Studios uh, made an appointment with me on December the 18th, and I anticipated that they wanted to put up employee discounts on our website. And um, the head of the foundation said she was only there for one reason, and that was to hand me a check for $25,000 for art programs. Needless to say, that made my Christmas, um, <laughs> as it will make many teachers Christmas. Um, we are putting out a grant, a competitive grant for the arts, and it'll go out right after the board meeting in January when the board determines the criteria for that. The first deadline for our Take Stock and Children applications has been extended until January 31st. The first round only produced 35, 35 qualified students and we have 51 scholarships. Uh, so we're working with the principals um, as well as um, CTE. We're looking at our construction academies, um, our teacher academies, because these scholarships can be used for technical education. Uh, and so those departments are working with us to get the word out. The Leader for Life winner that you met last month, Chris Ganesh, will be honored in Tallahassee on Wednesday and Thursday of this week, and I will be up there to support him, and I'll also be meeting with legislators for the consortium state matching grant. Last year we got $5 million, and if we are funded at the same level as last year, that means $75,000 uh, to Lake County. And the next foundation board meeting is January the 22nd at noon in the district office. Are there any questions? What is the age of the applicants for Take Stock? Is it eighth or ninth? It is ninth grade this year. Thank ninth you. grade. Mm -hmm. Carmen, can you give us a like, super abbreviated rundown of, of the Take Stock program? Because I don't think, at least I didn't know. I didn't understand about it, and I bet the public would like to understand a little more. Yes, Take Stock is um, it's actually funded with the DOE grant, and 45 of the 67 counties participate in this um, venture. And the venture involves three things, and that is scholarship, mentor, and hope. And we identified students in the, uh, it had been the eighth grade, but we've changed it to the ninth grade, that have at least a 2.5 GPA, um, don't have any behavioral or absent issues, and um, meet the USDA standard for um, household income. And if those students are selected, then we work with them. They have four workshops each year that get them soft skills ready, that get them college and career or college and tech ready. Um, and they have a mentor that meets with them a half an hour, we ask, at least three times a month on school campus. And what we found, the success of this program in Lake County, we have a 100% graduation rate. Um, in the years that we've been doing it, we have 94% of the students that we've awarded a scholarship are either in college or have graduated. In this program, we have eight doctorates from Lake County. We have 22 masters from Lake County. And the thing I'm proudest of, we have six teachers that have come back and teach in our school. A prime example is Anthony Ritter. Um, who not only is a teacher in our school, uh, very involved with robotics, but he also won Alumni of the Year for Tech Stock and Children. 
Um, and every dollar that we raise locally is matched at 100% from Florida prepay. So each one of those students gets um, two years, and in some cases we have um, stretch goals that will allow that student to have four years in a two plus two scholarship. Fabulous. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Carmen, Thank you. Yes. On the Elantra, do they get to keep that car, or is it? It is a three-year lease. Three-year lease. It is a three-year lease, and then they can buy it out if they so choose. Because I was asked that question the other day. Somebody thought it was just one year, and I said, no, nah, I don't think it's that. No, and that will be the sixth car that um, Jenkins has donated to teachers in our district. woo -hoo. Thank you to Jenkins, and thank you yes. to you, too. Thank you. Okay, um, Mr. Johnson, the attorney report. It's yeah, just a couple of quick things. Um, first of all, uh, the school board was uh, received a notice of potential litigation from Morgan and Morgan law firm in Orlando regarding to a copyright violation. Um, we've looked into it and believe there are some substantial defenses to the claim, but they've demanded considerable amount of money and uh, I recommended to the superintendent that we retain someone who has some knowledge in intellectual property or copyright. It's a very specialized area. Um, we have a, a agreement that has been sent to us from Dean Mead firm in Orlando. They have a gentleman that will, uh, has already reviewed that what happened and will look to try to um, persuade the attorneys that there is no claim that should go forward on this particular matter. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be asking the superintendent to sign a, a retainer agreement with Dean Mead for that purpose of being able to represent the school board in this matter. Um, it was, it's a substantial request for, uh, I believe the low number was 29,000 and it went up to 50 or 44,000 or something of that. It was a range of the kind of money they were looking for. So I, so I think it's, important that we have somebody who is familiar with this type of law to take care of it for us. <clears throat> um, oh, it's the, you said that the loan was 25, is that to pay the attorney? The demand. That, oh, that's the demand, okay, yes. thank you. I think, I, I, th I don't have the demand letter in front of me, but I think there was the original demand for something to 44 to $50,000, but they, take only $29,000 or something like that to settle it. So we actually don't think we owe anything and um, hopefully this will not be an expensive exercise. This uh, attorney was aware of the defenses that we had so and, and he thinks they are substantial as well. Any questions about that? No. Um, the second thing was a notification if I could. Um, on item 10.03, which is a cooperative agreement between the school board and Lake and Sumter Children's Advocacy Center. Um, our firm represents or has done work for Children's Advocacy Center in the past. Um, none of the work that we have done would be in conflict with this agreement or the services being asked for in this agreement. But if uh, any of y'all feel that somebody else needs to take a look at it, then we'll make arrangements to have that done. But uh, I am comfortable in saying I don't believe there's any conflict that arises as a result of this particular agreement. And that's all I have. Does anyone else have any comments? All right, thank you. We have no unfinished business. So moving on to the new business consent agenda, do you have a recommendation? I, I, I got a question. I don't know if we need to Please. pull it or not, but to, you were about to vote on item 9.06, which is the 186 day calendar in light of the public input we've heard. Is, is there anything that would keep us from voting on that tonight? Or I guess there's a meeting tomorrow to, to settle something. So, okay. But the calendar is okay to go forward. Calendar is okay. Okay, thanks. No other comments. I recommend approval of items 8.01 to 8.07 and 8.09 to 10.10. .10. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 
Any opposed? No? Motion passes unanimously. And we will move on to the first item. Mr. Gamble, 8.08. .08. Yeah, I, I don't have a problem with this particular item. I just have a comment that, uh, that goes with this. Mr. Carr and I did a trip a little bit over a year ago now through all the schools in the district looking at equipment and stuff that needed to be replaced. And somehow it seems that a lot of that is being overlooked and we're looking at doing other things rather than some of the things that he and I looked at. So I would just like attention put back on that, Mr. Carr, uh, with the superintendent's approval. I can't tell you what to do, but I just think it needs to be done that way. Uh, I, I think this is a good idea and we need to look at all the kitchens as well. Okay. <clears throat> but do you want to keep this item? Yeah, I'm okay with this. I mean, I think it's a little high, but you know, but this a, a it's not to exceed this amount is what I was explaining. All right. I'd be interested in learning more at some point about what this this to-do list looks like or what the goals are from your your expertise and your opinion of having worked in those kitchens. Um, I think, do, do you want to come up, Mr. Carr? Sure. <laughs> Just so I know what's on the horizon or what sort of things we should be advocating for, you know. Didn't we discuss like a priority, a priority list or a game? Yes, or, yes, or yes, and that's we, we are moving forward with that. This is something that, you know, the pond pan washer is a little bit different from what we're working on with regard to that. But as Board Member Gamble explained, as we've discussed, as far as we were identifying or have identified equipment that has exceeded its life expectancy, um, you know, based, based on usually, a, we use kind of use 10 years as, as, as an average and certain pieces of equipment less than that. Um, and looking at for efficiencies, you know, within the kitchen and seeing what we can do to upgrade some of our back of house equipment. So that's, that's basically what it entails. And as I recall, you know, Board Member Gamble, I think, you know, he and I, we, we went out and looked at it and rather than just start giving a list, that was pretty, pretty much it. Um, and we've, we've also did some beta tests on some combi ovens. I've, I've worked with uh, Board Member Mathias on that, and we're, we're going back to traditional steamers, as he's pointed, and made some excellent suggestions on that in operations with regard to maintenance. So um, also with regard to our food serving line that we have with variable temperature control pieces of equipment that are on our serving line, again, working with you know, Mr. Gamble and Mr. Mathias, some of the stuff that we had is perhaps more technologically advanced than we actually need for, for our function and use. So we're looking at some cost saving measures there as we go, go forth, as well as also ease of maintenance and what we can do for service you know, of the equipment for some of the, the, the more modern plug and play type equipment. Um, and so we're, we're, we've looked at it actually in depth and, and we're, we're, we're going forward and, you know, and identifying um, what, I, what I just said. So hopefully that gives you some insight on some of the things that, that we've done and what we're doing. I guess the other piece of that would be that I'd be interested in understanding more about the time frame uh, for what this, all these upgrades look like. Because I know food service had a pretty large fund balance, right? And so mm -hmm. uh, I guess my question is, yep. is, is there room to, to move a little faster on some of these? Or, or you know, I guess I would want to try and understand the. Sure, there, there, the there, there is. So, so, yeah, there is. So we've got some projects that we're going on, you know, that we're doing now, um, you know, and. Uh, yeah, we're, we're looking at the spring and what we can do, because obviously keep in mind that the items that I just outlined w w would require our, a, a complete disruption you know, of the service within the school. So we have a very limited window. And as you know, we, we, we try to take on a great deal within that limited window. So um, you know, that's, it's, it's a coordination. And uh, just where we are with the economy right now, sometimes when we're using, or most of the time, when we're using outside vendors to schedule within our window, um, spring bake is spring break, and we're not the only game in town. Um, so it, sometimes it's a little bit of challenge. It is a challenge, and it, it's also a challenge um, getting, getting subcontractors that are reliable and fulfill their commitment within that time frame. So it's not that we're not engaging. It's just sometimes we're, uh, they, they, they can't commit to our timeline. And so we're working with that, and, and, and we're... We have other programs in place, uh, as Mr. Mathias is aware, all of you aware, we're, we're, we're reaching out uh, to, to other local contractors for some suggestions and some thoughts. But again, some of the equipment we're using is, 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 is specialized equipment and 
you know, the licensing and franchising and working on that type of equipment is, is you know, governed to those individuals, to especially if it's, if it's under a warranty. So that's, you know, it, it's all, and we, but most of the equipment that we're talking about is not under warranty, so let me phrase that. That's just another concern that we have. Thank you for your explanation. TMI, I'm sure, so sorry. <laughs> Definitely. It was a wonderfully <laughs> thorough explanation. <laughs> All right. Um, so we need a motion, or we need Needs. a recommendation for 8.08. Recommend approval of 8.08 .08, purchase and installation of the pot and pan washer at Mount Dora Middle School. So, second. All right. First and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. Um, did we pull 10.03? No. 10 9.06? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we are on the discussion. 11.01, um, consideration of, I believe this is you. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The 11.01 .01 is, is uh, consideration of the final order for employee Emily of Figueroa. Uh, Ms. Figueroa requested a hearing and was given a hearing with Ms. Burns acting as the hearing officer. A uh, recommended order has been filed um, and is currently awaiting approval by the board. And the recommendation is certainly to uh, approve the uh, final order which will incorporate the recommended order that was completed by Dr. Burns. I, I still vote as usual, yes. correct? Yes, okay. Um, do you have a recommendation? Yeah. I recommend approval of 11.01 .01, consideration of the final order for Emily Figueroa. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion passes unanimous. And then I guess it would be like 11.01 .01 or 02, your new item. Correct. So in front of you is an amended agreement to the existing agreement with the city of Tiberias. We've been using the Tiberias High School has been using the Stover field for a number of years and the new softball coach had asked for some upgrades to the field. Um, that And this was what that agreement was actually saying is that the district is going to take care of the installation of a new fence that's going to make the field, and Mr. Gamble can talk way more about softball and baseball. I just know they need a new fence. <laughs> Um, and it will also require some movement of some sprinkler heads and irrigation, but it's going to meet some type of standard that will then allow them to be more competitive and host other softball and baseball tournaments and such. So that's why we were requesting the changes to the field. The city has said, absolutely, if y'all want to bear the cost of that, and Mr. Carr has been able to use some pre-existing materials, so there's very minimal cost for the district to go in and install the fence, and um, I think we have some contributors that are going to do a, um, a screen or a net of some sort over the field so it's going to look nice it's going to be some upgrades for our kids to be able to use the fields and they need this it's time sensitive because tryouts start in two weeks and they need it in place prior to the tryout so that's why I'm bringing it to you tonight um, so my recommendation is that we approve the amended agreement with the city of Tiberias I have so moved would you like to second so the discussion <laughs> Just so second. Yeah, second. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. For me to I think he's second. No. Uh, what this does also is uh, the coach expounded on this a little bit is that the uh, there was a girl last year that probably could have got a better scholarship in college if uh, her record showed that she got more triples than just ground rule doubles because the existing fence they had it would roll underneath and that constitutes a ground rule rub, uh, double because it's just a temporary fence. So uh, it could have helped her as far as the scholarship, getting something a little bit better there. Uh, but this also does to a double justice as far as our girls, as far as a high school, and also with the city. And I think this is something good. The first fence actually that was there was my daughter's senior year. Hmm. That's when I coached and we, we put up the first portable fence. So this is something. So I played for forward. three years without the portable fence and it adds like 20 feet to the distance you have to cover in the outfield to catch the ball. So it's a good Actually thing. further than that. I was going to say. <laughs> About 80 feet. I think you got the votes. You want to vote? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 No, any opposed? 
Okay. Uh, moving on to the superintendent's report. Well, Happy New Year. Um, the most exciting thing was last week we received our graduation rates, and I know you all have had a chance to look at that, and I just want to publicly thank all of our teachers and administrators and staff in our high schools who have been really incredibly focused on making sure that our mission as a district is achieved, and that is that every student graduate ready for college and other workforce, and we're seeing that over the past three years. We've risen almost 10%, moving from 77.8% to 86.8%. We're now mirroring, mir mirroring the um, district averages, or the district's, I'm sorry, the state's graduation rate. And we have six of our eight high schools that have all exceeded our mark of 90% or higher graduation rates. Um, and Leesburg High School has risen from 67% to 75% over the past three years. And so we're, we're absolutely seeing tremendous growth in this area. And I, I know that, that there's a lot of players to make sure that this happens, including our students. And, um, so I just want to thank everyone for their hard work in this area. I'm very proud of what's happening in our high schools in regards to our graduation rates and that our kids are, more kids are graduating. And so I want to say thank you for that. I also want to congratulate our three Teacher of the Year finalists. Some of you were with us as we traveled about and were able to recognize them. And um, that's always an exciting time. So um, that's all my comments for tonight. So thank you. Mrs. Luke. Um, I wanted to send a big thank you out to the um, city of Eustis, the city of Umatilla um, police departments, and the sheriff's office. I know that there was um, the last day of school before holiday break. It was a little bit of a scary moment for the schools in Umatilla. Um, I did want to share um, for you guys it's that as a mother that has children at that school, um, when I called and said, do I need to come and get my children? They said, no, we're perfectly safe and your kids are fine. Do not come here. And all of the teachers stayed extra hours and the support staff stayed. And I know Mark was there and Jimmer was there. And and I can tell you as a mother that I felt like my children were safe in, a, in what could have been a very dangerous environment. And that was a really nice feeling. I did not have a helicopter mom panic moment at all. I just said, okay, I'll wait for the call to come and get my kids. And, and that was really nice. And my kids felt safe. <laughs> And I think that's the first time I've experienced something of that nature with the new new things that we have in place for our children. And so I wanted to say thank you to everyone that was involved, especially you two gentlemen in the back and the teachers and the, and the principal. And um, anyway, it was executed really well and really fast. And there was that moment of leaving Umatilla. I had lunch with my kids that day and I was leaving and I saw Eustis police officers coming into Umatilla and that's when you know like something's happening. So it was kind of a scary moment. It turned very... Um, just was, was was good and so I appreciate that especially knowing that our children were there so um, I also wanted to say congratulations to the teacher of the year tapping um, finalists so we're excited about that coming up and last week we got to go to Lake Leadership and Dr. Weisskopf did a great job representing Lake County Schools along with Dr. Burns and Mr. Gamble and we got some really positive feedback I think from the group that was there so it's always nice when we can communicate a message and get some positive responses but I think that um, giving us the opportunity to get the message out there just helps so much for the perception of the school district and to get people to really see what we've been doing and the graduation rate. I think I asked and Dr. Weisskopf said, spoiler alert, but I'm not going to tell you, but it has risen. <laughs> so, um, and then the last thing we had our um, FBLA is the Florida Bandmasters Association. They had their all state competition this past week. We had several students that were in representation for Lake County there. It's the top of the state musicians and we just want to thank them and congratulate them for, for their accomplishments. And that's all. Ready? Mr. All right. Sorry, I just assumed you'd go. I need to start my watch again. Uh, I also want to caveat about the Teacher of the Year, and, and uh, what was fascinating was the first one we went to at Triangle, the teacher opened up the door not knowing that we were all behind the door as the students that was fixing to come into her classroom were going in, and she was welcoming them with a smile and everything, and then all of a sudden kind of walked around, and she was like, total shock. Here's, as Carmen said, about 15 to 20 people there to, to congratulate her on, on her uh, possible winning of this event. Uh, but it was great, and being able to travel to the other schools, and the teachers there were just, one was trying to set up for a science fair and, and just caught her off guard. But it, it was just great to be able to be part of this. Uh, also this past week at Treadway Elementary, they were given through uh, a donation a sandbox 
And I was able to, if you go on website right now, you might see me on there, but I got to play in the sandbox and it was fascinating as far as what was there. And uh, I asked some of the kids that were there from fourth grade that had participated the day before doing different things, what they would, could learn from this and would this make them more intrigued about being you know, involved with this? And they said yes, because we're able to see now actual effects of what it can or can't do. So uh, I, I enjoyed the opportunity to play in the sand there. Uh, it was great and uh, be part of that. I, I don't know how many people have seen a news report today about Dayton, Ohio, but uh, they're, they're adding 30 minutes to their school day and cutting it down to 160, 162 days a year from 172 to 175 that they are now. You know, and uh, I don't think that this is something that we may look at right now, but it's just a thought about in the future what this would do. But there again, we don't want to get our throats cut either. So, uh, <laughs> played in the sandbox, huh? I played in the sandbox. Yes, oh. <laughs> with this idea of cutting, you know, adding half hour to the day. All right, but also with the 2.7 uh, percent increase countywide on our graduation rate, as the superintendent uh, thanking everyone, uh, and sometimes some people are are. are appreciated more than others, but there's everybody that's involved with this in the background as well that we want to give appreciation to. Uh, I know there's virtual lab facilitators, there's guidance counselors, there's graduation counselors that we have that we've put into place and things to help this, but also you got your APs that are a lot of times behind this too in principle, so all involved. We appreciate your, your uh, contribution, I guess would be the word. And uh, I just want to say uh, we'll get out of here in time to see the football game tonight. If uh, hush, bye. <laughs> Mr. Dodd. All right. Yeah, thanks. Um, first, I'd like to, um, to acknowledge uh, the teachers out there that are using their voice uh, to, to speak to Tallahassee, um, to, to really request that Tallahassee fund us properly, uh, that we could then in turn use that money for teacher salaries and, and to talk about the backbone to then be able to, to, to fund them with some meaningful pay raises as well when we're talking about all of our employees aside from just the teachers. So we know it takes more than just a teacher to make the, the school work. Um, one thing that I found rather interesting uh, in one of Mr. Ward's budget documents is that he cites that the average annual increase in student funding since the 2000-2008 school year, fiscal year is 0.27%. 0.27%. I don't even know how you begin to work with that, but um, as we enter this session, uh, the new legislative session, I'm hopeful that all of our employees and all of our members of the public will join this board in being a unified voice to Tallahassee as we uh, encourage the governor and the legislature to work together to bring equity and funding to Lake County. Mr. Mathias, you've been the big champion for this over the years, and, uh, and it's sobering to think that that difference is $20 million a year to Lake County to just seek equity. I mean, that is huge, that is absolutely huge. So as this session kicks off, um, I'm just asking for everybody to, to please unite with us and be that voice to Tallahassee saying, um, you know, Lake County, we've been the bottom too long. I mean, if you think that we've been, well, when I, when I began my time on the board, I think we were 66 out of 67 counties and, and I, we've never really climbed out of the 60s. Uh, to think that we're the bottom of the state in a state that is already near the bottom of the nation uh, that's just a bad combination. So, um, so that's my encouragement to, to all of you out there that happen to be listening tonight. Please join, join in those voices and, and, and be heard. Uh, I'd also like to extend my congratulations to the teacher of the year finalist. I tell you, there's, there's hardly a better feeling in the world when you get to be that moment of surprise for a teacher and, and thanking them for the work that they've done and that they're being recognized. Um, it's a shame, really, we could only recognize three finalists because I'm sure of the, uh, the 48 uh, teachers of the year that submitted a nomination packet, all 48 of them uh, could very well be deserving of that honor. Um, one item I would like to, uh, to maybe uh, ask for some input on is that uh, uh, Ms. Challenger has uh, informed me that uh, the Four Corners Charter School Board is, is uh, seeking renewal of, of uh, some, some terms. I imagine uh, you want, continue to want uh, Jim Mr. Miller to Mr. serve Miller's in your place. Like he's ideal. You know, I, um, I, I've posed a question a few times if somebody would be willing to have the other seat, which is I, I've currently been filling that, unable to proxy that out. In fact, I'd even asked the school to identify maybe a Lake County parent uh, that would fulfill that role and still they couldn't get anybody to do it. Um, I, I guess at this point, I, 
I, I have trouble understanding. Um, I have trouble committing to serving on a charter school board of a school that's not even in our district. You know, um, so I guess the worst case scenario is if I say that Lake County doesn't have another appointee, then they give it to one of the other districts who. <laughs> It says, I have a, a letter from Natalie saying, according to the attached bylaws, the Four Corners Charter Board appointment can either be a current school board member or representatives of the public appointed by the board. That's right. Could we send a letter to their board and ask them to ask their the parents of their students? Or? I did. Oh. And nobody was interested. <laughs> well, I thought I had a great idea. That's brilliant. Or, hey, I've got an even better idea. Or if you I think know, the if next you know meeting is like next Jim week. Miller, you, you could go you know somebody like Jim Miller, in my know. place. <laughs> you could go in my place and you could fill in. That is like an hour and a half. <laughs> it's an hour and a half from my house. I don't even know how far it is from any of you, but I already live at the south end of the county and it takes me that long to get there. Uh, yeah. so, Do they need two? Well, well, okay, so the way the, the bylaws or the charter was set up, that um, three seats go to the Osceola School District and two seats go to Lake County. Because uh, I guess there was some joint venture many years ago when the school was first developed. Exactly. But in reality, what interest do we have in a charter school that's in another school district? <laughs> I mean, I think it, it said we, we have some kids in it. But we do. But we have more kids attending Florida Virtual School than we do attending the Osceola Four Corners School, but we don't have a seat on any sort of state board. So I, I, guess, I guess it's, I mean, do we need to have some sort of agenda item to say we'd be willing to give that seat to let them revise their charter to be one Lake County representative? Or That agreement was executed before there was choice and an ability for people to change, move from one school to the other in order to be able to serve kids from Lake Polk and Osceola at that charter school. We are on it as, as two board members, obviously a two out of five all the time doesn't do you a lot of good, but we are on it because we joined, I think, in some agreement with Osceola County when that school was built to to pledge our uh, ability to raise money in order to be able to get uh, the funds for en enough seats in that school. It, the money at the time, back <laughs> 20, 20 something years ago. So, I mean, I, I don't know what punishment there could be if no one showed <laughs> up to attend the, the meetings or not. They would still have their three majority votes for Osceola County and that would make all of the decisions anyway so all right well my recommendation is that we have we send Jim Miller uh, to continue that and, um, and and that's our only appointee from Lake County and uh, should they wish to fill that with a person of their choosing I'm not heartbroken sounds good to me I'm fine with that okay <laughs> great and um, and finally, um, Sherry, I'll send you the, uh, the information on this, but uh, Commissioner Sean Parks and I have an upcoming uh, coffee and conversations. We're going to do that on Wednesday, February 5th. Uh, we're going to have a, an afternoon installment. Uh, it'll be, um, I think the time is 4.30 to 6.30 at Mountaineer Coffee at the Citrus Tower. So that'll be a lot of fun. And um, we always look forward to some one-on-one -on -one and small group discussions uh, with, with the folks that come out. Uh, there's no formal presentation, so just you know, feel free to stop by any time during that time. Ask your education questions. I'll be there. Ask your county-related commission-type questions. Uh, uh, Sean Parks will be there. I think we even have the sheriff uh, present at this one, so you can ask your crime-related questions to him. That's it. Right. Thanks. Thank you very much, Mr. Mathias. So I want to give a quick shout out to the rally and tally for the benefit of our teachers and our uh, service workers and everyone that that keeps our schools running for the benefit of our kids. And I appreciate those teachers that took a personal day and were able to go. And um, for, uh, for those of us that are here and still have a job to do, and those that stayed in the classroom educated our kids, that there is a solidarity that we need to, to have equity and funding in Lake County. And Lake County is the one, only one I'm worried about, very honestly, um, and that when we are 62nd in funding, but 19th in population, that it's just not equitable. And thank you, Mark, for bringing it up. And I'll echo it. 20 million additional dollars would come to Lake County if we were just the state average. Not above it, just the average. So we've got a lot of hard work to do right here in Lake County. 1,000% I love the idea of us having our own rally. And we could do it on a Saturday when it's like 
a, a day that people normally are off anyway. <laughs> that would make some sense to me anyway. <laughs> um, I also want to applaud the superintendent on the 2% increase that when, when, uh, when she first did a walk about Lake County, it's the cornerstone of one of the goals that you set forth and that with everyone that's in this room that plays a part and you're spot on from the, from the aides, the custodian to the, the leadership that's in this room, but it truly is about leadership and vision and the superintendent said it was going to happen and it's happening. So thank you very much, superintendent. And that's it. And I, since we're talking, I forgot, I failed to mention, I'll be leaving on Tuesday. I'll be in Tallahassee all next week. And so I've been meeting with our lobbyists about setting up some appointments for next week. So I'll be stopping in to visit with some of our delegation as well as other leaders in Tallahassee to, and I'll be talking about the compression adjustment. That's really what my, my message is this week. Because I head to Tallahassee next week as well since um, we were here today. And I, I did want to thank, we had lots of subs here today that, that came in and cover classrooms. That was priority number one as Ms. Luke and I met at a school this morning to make sure that every classroom was covered and our leaders did a great job making sure that everybody was, who wanted to go was able to go and that um, our kids were well taken care of today. So I'm very grateful for that as well. So thank you for letting me add. Oh no, of course. Yeah, um, I also wanted to shout out to the Take Tallahassee Rally. Um, our funding out of Tallahassee is, is really becoming critical. Um, I feel like we, in our county, with being having such a giant disparity between 19th percentage in a number of kids and 62nd in... I mean, it's just, difference. yeah, it's just ridiculously uneven and we're reaching a critical point where we're not going to be able to change salaries or hire excellent teachers. I mean, this is really coming down to affecting kids at this point. And I don't think if people in our community doesn't uh, step up and start really talking to your legislators because they're the ones who hold the dollars and they're the ones that decide that the teachers can all have a pay bonus, some of them maybe, if they happen to qualify. Um, and what we, our teachers need is fair compensation and across the board. And it needs to be really looked at and invested in because we need to invest in our children. Um, and I did want to shout out to the graduation rates because, oh my gosh, Umatilla went up by 9%. That is amazing. And Leesburg is my baby. And I know my baby's still struggling a little bit, but we're coming along. I mean, we, we getting up to 75 is big and they'll continue to increase. And it's just gonna be something that is gonna take a little time and, and love and they're gonna get there. And um, I'm just really proud of the, the progress that this district has made. So, and with that, um, we are adjourned.